Hello friends, we're here today in 1 Peter chapter 2. So in the last chapter, he ended by quoting Isaiah and saying, the, the grass may wither and the flower may fade, but the word of the Lord will stand forever. And the word of the Lord that he's talking about is the gospel. And he's saying, so, so in light of the gospel, in the last chapter, and, and here he's saying, so be holy, you know, so put away all of these all of these bad things in your life because, because of the gospel. You know, later on in this chapter, he touches on this point again. He tells us to live like free people. He says, you've, you've been freed. What does he mean by that? You know, he says, so don't, don't use your freedom to, to continue sinning. But in what way have we been freed? The gospel is that, that Christ died so that we could be free, so that he paid the price for us, so that we can be free. And you might ask, what are, what are we free from? We're free from sin. We're free from the power of the sin. We're free from the penalty of the sin. He has, he has paid the ransom that, that we owed because of our sin. So drink that up like milk, you know, like, like an infant needs milk. You, you, Christians need to look into the gospel and realize that the life that you live is all completely owed to God as he died so that you can have eternal life. So everything you do in this life is pales in comparison to, to what you owe God for giving you eternal life. So the more that we can remember the, the magnitude of, of the debt that we had, and, and the, the penalty that, that we deserve, the more that we can understand that and know that and know the, the amazing price that the God of this world paid so that we can be with him, you know, the, the more we can really look into that, the more we can drink that up like milk, the more we can live the free life that God wants us to live. Now in this chapter, there's an interesting part here where he says he's the, the living stone. I love this picture. <laughs> a living stone. That means that he, because he died, should be as dead as a stone. He is just, he should be a rock and yet he is living. And so he's like, he is, he is the living stone in the same way that he is a living stone. We are going to be living stones. We are going to be people that should be dead, but miraculously are alive, just like a living rock. You know, it's, <laughs> I love this picture. It's so, it's so vivid. But he keeps on going with the stone analogy and he's saying, he's not just the living stone, he's the cornerstone. He's the stumbling stone. And by a cornerstone, you mean, you know, if you make a, a, a foundation, if you make a building, you know, you have to have the cornerstone is the, is the one that everything else is put upon. And he's saying, we, as living stones, we're building up this, this new structure. We're the, the fortress of God. <laughs> and I love what he says next, too. He says, we are a royal priesthood, a, a chosen people, and a holy nation. Now this is, this is kind of amazing what he's saying because these are people scattered, scattered around. You know, these are, these are sojourners. The, these, are, these are exiles. And he's talking to, to people that have no real relationship, no blood connection with each other. And he's saying, you are a royal nation. We are all as Christians, we're all part of one nation. Like God chose Abraham and his people, we are the people of God through our, our faith, of course, but, but we have been chosen by God to be his royal priesthood. And I think that's the most interesting to me. You know, we, we are the priesthood of God. We, we understand that that the sacrifice that was by the priests is now something that lives with us. 
He says that at once you were not the people of God, but you have become the people of God. And once you had no mercy, but now you have received mercy. Now this is straightforward language, but he's also referencing something that's really fun. A long time ago in the Old Testament, there was a prophet by the name of Hosea. And God wanted to show his people how the people are being in a relationship with him. And so he tells this prophet to marry this prostitute named Gomer. And she was a, an unfaithful wife after they were married. Now, this is a, a very interesting picture. That's a picture a, a prophet in this nation is very respected person. So picture that the prophet is the, the speaker of the house. And, and here you have this wife of the speaker of the house and she's a harlot. You know people that have, have paid to be with the wife of the speaker of the house. It's, it's kind of, it would be kind of an amazing and ridiculous thing. They had three children. I don't remember the name of the other one, but one of them was called No More Mercy, and one of them was called Not My People. Could you imagine that the kids <laughs> naming your child Not My People? But that's what he's referencing here. He's saying once you were like, once you were like, you know, the, the people of Israel, you know, as, as Gomer the harlot and had all these, all these children. And, and he's saying at once, I was saying, you guys are not my people. You know, there is no more mercy. And here Peter is saying, once you were, you were the descendants of, uh, of these. Once you were the descendants of the people that were not my people. And once you were the descendants of, of the people that had no more mercy, but now now you are those people. Now you're, you're God's true offspring. Now in light of this, he's talking, going back to the persecution. And he's saying, when you go through this persecution, just make sure that you live as someone who belongs to God. Make sure that you act in, in a perfect way so that people may see your good works, see your good deeds, and they'll glorify God in heaven. This is where the movement of nonviolence came from. This idea, you know, that, that people like Martin Luther King Jr. and, and Gandhi embrace this idea of, let's just try to be as best as we can, and then when people persecute us, eventually they'll be like, look, we can't do this anymore. This is, this is wrong. So Peter here is urging them. He says, just be, be as Jesus was, who went to the cross, even though he had done nothing wrong. You need to be like your king. You need to be like the God, the, like the example that was given to you. And what's great about this is that eventually, even though the persecution of the Christians in the Roman Empire was so great and so horrific, and it even got the writer of this book you know, not too much long later, it became the Holy Roman Empire. Christianity took over the Roman Empire and then spread it all around the world. And you might think, why did this happen? It was because of what Peter is saying here. He's saying, just be, be righteous, be, be holy, and God will take care of the rest. So anyways, that is Peter chapter 2, 1 Peter chapter 2. Have a great day. Bye.